threat of global catastrophe has never been greater. The chain of events that could unravel our society could come from anywhere and without warning. Imagine a world without government, food, water, or power. I'm Rudy Reyes. I've served seven years as a recon marine. I fought in Iraq and Afghanistan. I've been trained to survive extreme conditions. I'm going to show you how to survive after Armageddon. Tragic events like Katrina and 9-11 show us that all the things we take for granted can be destroyed with terrifying speed. Homeland Security tells us to prepare for 72 hours after a major disaster. But what happens if there is no Homeland Security? No law, no one to help you. If you survived a catastrophic disaster, you would probably emerge into a very different world. Everything will have changed, and I mean everything. The people you might meet, where you get food, water, how you make shelter, they either won't exist, or they can't be trusted. But the resources you will need to survive are out there, and I'll show you how to find them. The first place I'm going to head to is the nearest city. Even after a major disaster, survival basics can be found there in the most surprising places. Our mission? is to locate them. When you're in the open, move quickly. If there are other survivors, they could be a threat. Keep off the main highways and stick to less traveled routes, like rail lines. When society breaks down, people will be desperate. They'll be hungry. They'll be disoriented. If they see you, they'll want to fight you for what you got. So you've got to blend, you've got to hide, deceive, camouflage your movements in and out of the city. So if you do run into somebody, you run into them on your terms. After a major disaster, traveling will be much tougher and potentially dangerous. Freeways could be jammed with abandoned cars, trains and airports inoperable, rivers contaminated, and bridges and tunnels blocked. If civilization breaks down and martial law is put into place, bridges will be raised or blocked to limit people's movement. We can't swim the river. Treatment plants, sewage plants, they're going to be shut down. There could be all kinds of caustic chemicals and poisons in there. Not a good idea. So you've got to figure another way around. Try not to let obstacles like this stop you. There's always a way to overcome them. I know it looks crazy, but with proper procedure, it can be done. Using an old tire iron I found, I'm going to improvise a grappling hook. With the rope I've got in my pack, I'm going to make a simple ladder to climb up onto the other side. All right, we're going to have to make some handholds and some footholds. It's a butterfly knot. The butterfly knots will act as a rope ladder and let me climb up once I've swung out. Great handhold, great foothold, equal tension, both up and down, very secure. This tire iron will make an ideal grappling hook. Twist. Tire irons and crowbars like this will be easy to find and they have a thousand uses. They easily earn their weight in my pack. All right, here we go. All right, you're looking for a really good anchor point. This looks like a great anchor point, not too far away. We're going to try to get it in there, give it a tug. If we've got some positive purchase with this grappling hook, we're good to go. That feels positive. You got to have confidence in your abilities. The rope would be too thin to climb without butterfly knot handholds. Keep focused where your hands and feet are placed and think about your next move. Don't ever let your concentration falter. It's a long way down to the river. Really exposed up here. You need to make your way off to this danger area as 
fast as you can. Night's coming in fast. You need to make shelter. These broke down buildings, they look scary. But the light's fading. You need to get some cover, concealment, some shelter. This flashlight with fresh batteries, it's gonna save your life. Keeping it going, however, that's gonna be a challenge. Every time you move into a new area, you do a security sweep. You don't know who's been here, you don't know who still may be here. You carry your flashlight just like so, so you can use it as a weapon. If somebody does pop out around a corner with a bad attitude. Steel wool. This is really good for fire making. It makes excellent tinder. If you find some, make sure you store it away. It really comes in handy. What used to be junk could now save your life. Well, I'm looking for the best place to stay and I'm thinking tactically. The second floor is good. It's high enough to hear anyone coming and low enough to jump if you need to make a hasty exit. Remember to cover your tracks. All right, a few things to consider with the harbor site. You want a place that's secure and secluded. Also, you need to be able to fight and defend yourself from this position, and you need an escape. Uh, if you've got to make a hasty retreat, it's got to be something that you can get to and get out fast. That's not the Hilton, but it's going to do good for us. Now it's time to build a fire and I'm gonna use the steel wool I found to start it. Let's fray it up a bit. There we go, because um, as these little baby wires get pulled out from the big mass, they're gonna catch a lot easier. And now here's the trick. All right, you're gonna take this power source, this battery, nine volt, and you're gonna put it to this steel wool. Make sure you don't stow these supplies together, because it'll go up, just like this. This is known as jewel heating. The fine filaments of the steel wool glow red hot when they come into contact with an electrical power source like a battery. Great for starting fires. Get some kindling. Now she's starting to go. All right, so I'm covering up my light so that from the outside, people are not gonna be able to see. The final stage is to cover the top of the fire with damp cardboard, which should soak up most of the smoke. There we go. From a couple paces away, people are not going to see the glow of the fire. And this is something that you're going to build up so you can keep yourself hidden and you can keep yourself safe. <laughs> 